All right, welcome back to the deep dive. Today, we're going deep on an asteroid you probably saw in the news late last year. Okay. 2024 YR4. Right. Now, you might remember some of those early headlines, maybe even saw some speculation about it hitting Earth. Yeah, definitely got people talking when it first popped up on the radar. Exactly. And, you know, it did seem like a pretty serious threat initially, but here's the twist, and this is where it gets really interesting. Scientists are actually pretty excited about 2024 YR4 and its close encounter with us. Yeah, there's this great quote I saw that really sums it up. Oh, yeah. It said, when the universe gives you asteroid lemons, you make science lemonade. I like that. That's good. So we're going to dive into why researchers are so jazzed about this particular space rock. It's turning into a real opportunity. Absolutely. And we'll be drawing on a ton of scientific analyses and observations about 2024 YR4. Cool. So get ready, because we're about to uncover some pretty amazing possibilities. We're talking studying this asteroid up close, maybe even testing planetary defense systems. It's and of course, learning a whole lot more about our solar system along the way. Right. OK, let's rewind back to the beginning. When was this thing first discovered? So 2024 YR4 first spotted December 2024 okay. by astronomers who are always on the lookout for these near-Earth objects. Right, always scanning the skies. 247, and pretty quickly it was classified as what we call an Apollo-type asteroid. Apollo-type asteroid. For those of us who don't speak fluent asteroid, what does that mean exactly? So it means its orbit actually crosses Earth's path around the sun. Oh, okay. So that's what puts it on our radar as a potential impact or something we need to keep an eye on. Makes sense. And the early size estimates were, well, somewhere between 130 and 300 feet in diameter. Okay. Or if you prefer metric, that's 40 to 90 meters. So not tiny. No, big enough to cause some serious regional damage if it were to hit us. So we're talking potentially city flattening kind of damage here. I remember reading about an initial impact probability. I'm sure you saw those numbers too. Yeah, initially there was about a 1% chance calculated for impact in 2032. 1%? That doesn't sound huge. No, but yeah. the potential consequences were definitely serious enough to take it very seriously. All right. You know, an impact of that size releases energy comparable to a nuclear explosion. Wow. Which could devastate entire cities and cause widespread destruction. Yeah, so, sure. yeah, low probability. Right. But really catastrophic potential results. So those initial calculations were crucial to figure out what we were dealing with. And it makes you think back to past asteroid events, right? There was one in particular that came up in the research. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like a historical comparison point. The 1908 Tunguska event in Siberia. All right, Tunguska. Similar size object leveled something like 2,000 square kilometers of forest. Just whipped it out. Just like that. <laughs> so yeah, I can see why everyone was a little on edge when they first started tracking 2024 YR4. Yeah, it was definitely a justified concern. But thankfully, the story doesn't end there. We went from potential catastrophe to something a lot more promising. How did that happen? Well, as astronomers kept watching 2024 YR4, okay. they gathered more and more precise data on its trajectory. Mm -hmm. And by early 2025, those observations led to a major update. Okay. The risk of impact dropped to near zero. Mm -hmm. It was reclassified as non-threatening. That's a relief. So basically false alarm, but in the best way possible. Yeah, exactly. What's amazing is this whole thing really highlights how important it is to continuously track these near-Earth objects. Absolutely. What looked scary at first turned into a really valuable opportunity for science, thanks to how good we've gotten at tracking and detection. Yeah, it shows how far we've come. Okay, so no need to panic, but as we mentioned, this close encounter is more than just a sigh of relief. It's a launch pad for some seriously cool science. What kind of opportunities are we talking about here? Well, first of all, 2024 YR4 is going to keep swinging by Earth pretty regularly. Okay. About every four years as its orbit crosses ours. It's like a frequent flyer program, but for asteroids. Right. So it's not a one-time visitor. Nope. And here's the other really important thing. Okay. During these close approaches, the speed difference between Earth and the asteroid is actually pretty small. Okay, so it's not zipping past us at insane speeds. No which makes it way easier to reach. And when you say easier, you mean? I mean cheaper, less fuel. So more feasible. Way more feasible. Like missions that would be incredibly difficult and expensive suddenly become more realistic. Exactly. Once a spacecraft escapes Earth's gravity, getting to 2024 YR4 during one of those close passes is basically like a free ride. 
Wow, free ride in space, that's not something you hear every day. Hey. So what kind of missions does this open up? Well, for one, flyby missions become a lot simpler. Hey. There are actually launch windows opening up almost every year. Wow. And one study even pointed out a window in 2028 okay. where a mission could get to the asteroid in just a few months. Wow, that's quick. Yeah, and not only that, they could pass by it really slowly. Okay. Giving us time to gather a ton of data. So we're talking slow, close flyby, lots of time to really look at this thing. That's pretty exciting. It is. And it's not just flies eyes. More complex missions are possible too. Like what? Well, one really exciting possibility is using 2024 YR4 to test out how we might deflect an asteroid. Kind of like NASA's DART mission back in 2022. Ah, uh, yes, the double asteroid redirection test. Yeah. They slammed a spacecraft right into an asteroid moonlit, yeah. changed its course. It was a huge deal. It was a real proof of concept that we could actually nudge an asteroid off course if we had to. And now 2024 YR4 is giving us a chance to try that again. In a much more controlled environment, which is really valuable, we can learn a lot about how different asteroids respond to these impacts. So it's not just about deflecting one specific asteroid, it's about getting better at it in case we ever need to do it for real. Exactly, refining our techniques and models, that kind of thing. So what kind of spacecraft are we talking about for this type of mission? Oh, it doesn't have to be anything massive. The study showed that even a small spacecraft, okay. maybe around 22 pounds, about 10 kilograms. Okay, pretty small. Yeah, launched during a good window in summer 2028, could reach 2024 YR4, hit ah. it, and potentially change its path by as much as 620 miles or a thousand kilometers. A thousand kilometers, that's enough to make a real difference. It is, enough to potentially avoid that hypothetical 2032 impact. Right. Even though the risk is pretty much zero right now. So it's like a practice run. Exactly, we get to test our skills and make sure we're ready just in case. Okay, so we've got flybys, we've got deflection tests. What else is on the table? Well, what about bringing a piece of 2024 YR4 back to Earth? Oh, you mean like NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission to Bennu? Exactly like that. That mission yeah. collected samples and brought them back just last year. It was amazing. We learned so much about asteroids from that. So you're saying we could do something similar with 2024 YR4? We could. Imagine studying the composition and structure up close. We could learn a ton about how our solar system formed. Even look for signs of organic compounds, the building blocks of life. That's incredible getting our hands on a piece of an asteroid. And on top of that, it could help us figure out if asteroid mining is a real possibility. You know, some asteroids are full of valuable metals and minerals. Right, right, like space resources. Exactly. Plus, we'd get even better at understanding the physical properties of these near-Earth asteroids, which feeds back into those deflection models we were talking about. Right, so it all ties together. So we're not just talking planetary defense. We're talking resource potential and just fundamental scientific knowledge. It's the whole package. OK, so we've got flybys, deflection tests, sample return. Are there any other mission types we could realistically do with 2024 YR4? You know what, because of those frequent low-velocity encounters, even rendezvous and landing missions become pretty feasible. Hold on, landing on an asteroid, that sounds incredibly difficult. It is, but one study showed that if we launched a spacecraft in December 2028, okay, it could actually get to 2024 YR4, and with enough fuel left over, rendezvous with it, and attempt a landing within just a couple of years. That's a lot faster than I would have guessed. Right. That tight time frame means we could use the latest tech, land it on an asteroid, collect samples, and potentially yeah. even bring them back relatively quickly. So 2024 YR4 is like a gift to the scientific community. It's giving us so many opportunities to study these objects up close. And you mentioned earlier that these missions are cheaper compared to, say, deep space missions. Yeah, deep space missions, you're talking massive amounts of fuel, right. long travel times. Lots of course corrections. Yeah, lots of complex maneuvers. Yeah. But 2024 YR4 comes close enough to Earth regularly right. that it cuts down those travel times and the fuel needs significantly. So it's like budget-friendly space exploration. Kinda, yeah. We get more science for less cost, which is always a good thing. And it's not like we need to invent a whole bunch of new tech for these missions, right? Nope. We've already got spacecraft that could do the job. Mike. Well, the researchers pointed to NASA's New Horizons spacecraft as a good example. Oh, the one that flew by Pluto. That's the one. Yeah. It traveled billions of miles. It could definitely handle studying 2024 YR4. So we've got the tools, we've got the opportunity, and we've got this asteroid practically begging us to study it. This whole story really shows how far we've come in our ability to track these objects. 
Speaking of which, let's talk about the history of asteroid tracking and planetary defense. It hasn't always been this advanced, right? Not at all. We've gone from basic telescopes to incredibly sophisticated infrared and radar systems. Back in the day, a lot of these near-Earth objects probably slipped by completely unnoticed. Oh yeah, tons of them. Yeah. Made it almost impossible to predict potential impacts. And we have had some close calls, even some impacts, right? Absolutely. We've got the Tunguska event we talked about. Yeah. Huge impact, nobody saw it coming. It's scary to think about. And then more recently, there was the uh, Chelyabinsk meteor in Russia in 2013. Oh yeah, I remember that. Over 1,500 people injured. Wow, that must have been a wake-up call for everyone. It was. It really highlighted the need for better detection systems. So what did we do? Well, in response, space agencies started developing dedicated tracking programs. Okay. NASA created its Near-Earth Object Observations Program, or NEO Observations Program, to catalog and monitor these objects. So keeping a close eye on anything that gets too close for comfort. Exactly. And in 2016, they went a step further and created the Planetary Defense Coordination Office. OK, what does that office do? They coordinate all the efforts related to asteroid tracking and impact prevention. So they're like the Planetary Defense Headquarters. Pretty much. Yeah. And it's not just a NASA effort. The European Space Agency, ESA, has its HERA mission, which is specifically looking at how effective our deflection techniques are. Okay, so it's a global effort. It is. And then you've got the International Asteroid Warning Network, which helps share data and coordinate responses globally. So everyone's working together to keep an eye on the skies. And the technology is constantly improving, right? All the time. We've got new space-based telescopes like NEOWISE okay. and the upcoming NEO Surveyor, which are going to give us even more precise and proactive detection capabilities. So we're getting better at spotting these things early. Exactly, which gives us more time to react if we need to. And it's not just about detection, it's about response as well. Okay, what are we doing on that front? Well, agencies are developing rapid response missions that could launch quickly if we find a hazardous asteroid late in the game. So like an emergency response team, but for space. Yep, and there's a lot of research going into using artificial intelligence, AI, to make those predictions even faster and more accurate. So AI is helping us spot potential asteroid threats? That's amazing. And you mentioned international collaboration a couple of times. It sounds like this really is a global effort to protect our planet. It has to be. We all share this planet, so we need to work together to keep it safe from these kinds of threats. And 2024 YR4 really highlights that. It's a perfect example of how far we've come, both in terms of our understanding of these objects and our ability to potentially interact with them. Absolutely. It's a symbol of our growing ability to protect ourselves. It's like we're turning a potential disaster into a learning opportunity. Exactly. And maybe the next time we hear about a potentially dangerous asteroid, we can hope that it comes close enough for us to study it, just like we're doing with 2024 YR4. So to sum it all up, what started as a bit of a scare has turned into a gold mine for science. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. We've got this incredible opportunity to learn more about asteroids, test our planetary defense systems, and maybe even find some valuable resources in space. It's a really exciting time for asteroid research. It makes you wonder what other seemingly negative events might actually be hiding amazing opportunities, just waiting for us to discover them. It's all about changing our perspective and seeing those possibilities. I think you're right. Sometimes those lemons really do make the best lemonade. Well said. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll see you next time. See you then. And until then, keep looking up.